Good morning, Church. Our verse of scripture for today's giving is in Hebrews 13, 5. Let us all read. Let your character or moral disposition be free from love of money and be satisfied with your present. For he himself has said, I will not in any way fail you, nor give you up, nor leave you without support. I will not in any degree leave you hopeless, nor forsake you, nor let you down. This verse is an encouraging scripture that will greatly help us, especially in facing this kind of circumstances that we have right now. The Lord lets us know that we do not need to have our mindset on money because when money is the servant of man, it can be put too much good, but it can also be a root of any kinds or many kinds of evil. For when the love of money shows its ugly head, it spawns a covetous heart and gives birth to a restless soul and discontented. Why should we be content with what we have? Well, discontent breeds murmuring against God. We will start complaining and comparing our lives to others. This verse of scripture also reminds us that the Lord let us know that we do not need to worry how we will take care of ourselves because he promised to take care of these things for us. He has given us many precious blessings and has promised he never fail us nor forsake us. This verse has reminded me of how faithful my God is. I just want to share my testimony when I experienced God's faithfulness in my life. Way back when I had just given birth to my son, Gianni, I was on my maternity leave. There was this foreign teacher who tried to pull me down. He really wanted to, to try. He really tried to pull me down. He even told the school director that I am not coming back to school after I gave birth. So this rumor has been circulating all over the school while I was gone. Then there was a good teacher who visited me at home while I was breastfeeding my baby. She told me everything. And because she was so concerned about me, she advised me to go to school and talk to the school director. So the following day, before I went to school, I prayed. I said, God, I believe that you are more powerful than them. You are more powerful than their positions at my workplace. I need you to help me because I really need this job as the source of my income to support my baby. I even said, God, you know, that I am faithful in giving my tithes. Please do not let these things happen to me. And God spoke to me through this verse in Hebrews 13, 5. As I walk to school, God's word is like an echo to my ear. He said, I will not leave you nor forsake you. I will not leave you without support. It's just like an echo. I, I heard it again and again and again. So I went to school, spoke to my school director, and he told me, Okay, so you're coming back. And I said, Yes. That foreign teacher did not stop pulling me down. He still tried to send me out of the school. He told other, other teachers that my visa will end in January 31 and he said that the school will not be renewing my contract anymore. And again, I run to God. I prayed, God, this is not true. You are more powerful than them. I just 
pray every day while waiting for my new contract. Normally, a month before our visa will expire, the school HR will let us sign documents needed for the renewal and extension of our visa. So only one week left. I haven't signed any documents yet. I even tried to ask the HR why and even the HR cannot answer why. So I just prayed and prayed and again I said, God, please help me. And God answered me again, I will not leave you nor forsake you. Then here comes January 30. I still have hope. I just hold on to God's promises. When I went to school, the HR called me, Miss, come and sign all these documents and please run to the immigration for the extension of your visa. And you know that feeling that while I'm signing the documents, my hand was shaking and my heart was shouting like, Thank you, Lord. I ran to my house and I cried. I said, truly God, you are alive. So in short, my contract has been renewed, visa extended, and the guy who tried to pull me down was the one who has been kicked out from my school. And I thank God I'm still at school until now and he promoted me to be the, the head of our department. From that moment on, I am always excited to give my tithes and offering to the Lord. Although I give my tithes every month, but the joy in my heart is overflowing. The excitement every time I give is unmeasurable. Every month that I gave my tithes until now, I am very excited. My mindset was, this is just 10% of what you have given me, Lord. Thank you. Thank you so much. When we give, it covers all. We have God's providence. We have God's protection, not only for us, but also for the whole family. So for our takeaway, for today, it is important for us to do our part, but we must not try to do God's part. What is our part? Our part is to be active, not passive. To be active in prayer while waiting for God's word. Let us pray. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for your faithfulness, Lord God. Thank you for being so faithful and just to us, Lord God, even though that we are unfaithful, Lord. But, Lord, you have teach us to be faithful to you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for being the same yesterday, today, and forever, Lord. Thank you for your love, for your protection, for your guidance, Lord God, for the wisdom. And also, Lord, I thank you, God, for your precious blood that is covering us, Lord, wherever we go, whatever we do. You, we are covered. We are protected by you, Lord. Lord, I just want to pray also, Lord, for your people outside, Lord God, especially, Lord, to those who lost their jobs, Lord God, because of this pandemic. I pray for your protection, Lord, for your provisions to them, Lord God. And I pray, Father God, that you will continue, Lord God, to cover them, Lord God, with your precious blood. Cover them, Lord God, with your blessings, Lord God. I just want to give you back all the glory, the honor, the praises, and thanksgiving. In the mighty and powerful name of your Son, our Savior and Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.